I have a, a research background in chemistry. So I did a PhD um, and postdoc, postdoctoral research in organic chemistry. And I enjoyed my research, but um, I was ready to move away from the bench. I was keen to be involved in science, but not do science. And I was keen to pursue a career that would um, broaden my perspective in terms of subject areas rather, rather than focus me in on a particular area of chemistry. So I joined uh, Nature Communications in 2009 as one of the launch editors there and became a senior editor there. And then I moved to Scientific Reports in 2013. And I was attracted to the idea of working on um, a, an inclusive and high quality um, journal and being able to contribute to the, to the development of, of that. There's no very typical day on scientific reports. As chief editor, I oversee um, a group of eight in-house editors and we oversee the um, editorial decision-making process and the peer review process on the journal. And those processes are managed directly by our external editorial board members. So they are the people who decide whether to send a manuscript out to peer review, they recruit peer reviewers and they make decisions after peer review. This year we've also had a lot of um, projects to enhance levels of author service across the journal and we're really starting to see those projects um, bear fr fruit particularly in terms of um, significantly improved um, times to decision. Scientific reports, um, given the, the, the scale of our operations here, um, there's an awful lot of variety in the role and I get, I get a lot of satisfaction out of having a varied role. But I think my highlight and what I enjoy the, the most is working with our in-house editors and with our uh, external editorial board members and developing those teams um, such that um, we provide a high level of service to our authors and we oversee a very uh, robust um, peer review process and a robust um, editorial process. Um, and, and through being able to develop those teams and the processes on the journal, we've been able to build um, a trusted and high quality, inclusive um, journal. Scientific reports publishes uh, research from all areas of the natural and clinical sciences. In terms of the editorial criteria of the journal, um, we don't make publication decisions based on perceived importance, significance or impact, um, but the rigorous peer review processes we have on the journal ensure that we only publish high quality or robust science. So we're looking for papers that make an original contribution to our existing knowledge. We're looking for papers where the conclusions are fully supported by the data um, presented. We're looking for reproducible science that is, that is uh, thoroughly and well reported. Um, and we're looking for papers where the conclusions are presented in the context uh, of previous literature. Because Scientific Reports is an inclusive journal, um, sometimes uh, people think that that means that we publish all submissions. Of course, that isn't the case, uh, and the current accept rate of the journal is about 48%. Um, we have rigorous and robust editorial uh, and peer review process in place, and those processes are overseen by our expert editorial, external editorial board members. Uh, and these processes ensure that we are only publishing high quality, um, robust science. To read our submission guidelines uh, carefully um, and ensure that they have complied with uh, all relevant um, policies before submitting to the journal. And then they should ensure that the central conclusions of the paper are fully supported by the data and the results um, that, that are presented. 
And in terms of some specific advice in sort of presenting and writing the paper, you may want to pay particular attention to titles and abstracts. These are the, the things that our board members will see and will read when deciding whether to, um, to handle your paper, and they're what the peer reviewers see when they're deciding whether to agree to review your paper. So if you make it clear within your title and within your abstract what the central conclusions of the paper are, what you are reporting, you're more likely to find that your paper proceeds um, swiftly through the peer review process. And of course, ensuring that your title and your abstract in particular um, are of high quality and do make the conclusions of your paper clear help to increase the impact of your paper when it is published. Academic publishing in an editorial career tends to attract people who are very passionate about science but perhaps are ready to, um, to leave the bench, so to be involved in science but perhaps not necessarily do science. Um, it attracts people who um, want to broaden their, their exposure to different subject areas. Um, and people who are very interested in reading um, and, and writing. When becoming an editor for the first time or embarking on an editorial career, there's a, a steep learning curve involved. I mean, it, this is, it's often a career change for, for most people who, who, who become an editor for the first time. And so um, high levels of resilience are key, as are good time management skills. Um, and we're also looking for that broader passion in science, so that kind of broader interest beyond someone's own area um, of interest. A good knowledge of the peer review um, process is, is also um, important.